to spot an installation underway at the Denny Gallery. Look, it says they're even closed, but uh, kind of uh, insinuating ourselves in here. Show by Russell Tyler, congratulations. Does the, does the show have a title? Yeah, Strange Variants. Strange Variants. Okay, we're actually here before the show is at, totally, completely hung, but uh, God, I love to uh, sneak around and catch people when they're not expecting it, sort of like Alan Funt and Canon Camera. <laughs> so this represents work from what, about the last two years, something like that? Oh, well, this work is past four or five months. Four or five months? Yeah. Oh, you've been a busy guy. Very busy. But it represents the body of work over the past two, three years. And these pieces are all, what about five by four feet? Is that? Uh, five by four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. Well, of course, uh, I love your factor. And there's the lovely Trudy Benson. <laughs> Just briefly, so let's take, for example, this piece here where you've got the very kind of uh, hard edge geometric forms. Sure. Very uh, kind of formalistic. And then you're playing that off against this new batch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I've seen some other work. How did this happen? <laughs> um, it was just kind of, this happened because I was trying to figure out a way of making a gestural painting that makes sense with the geometric work. And at first they were super monochromatic, very light in tone, not much contrast. Um, and they just kind of progressed over time and, uh, I guess, uh, had a life of their own. So, so you were working on these two bodies of work at the same time, is that? Yeah. And then you've also got these pieces here, kind these of like the, fresh. the explosions. Nobody knows about these ones yet, they're brand new. Oh boy, folks, this is an exclusive. <laughs> okay. Does this particular series, this body of work have a title? Or a um, name? No, I don't have a title for the particular body of work, but um, I guess they're a bit more drawerly and... Um, Draftsmanly? I guess draft, <laughs> Drawer, drawerly. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, know. I, 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 take I, it. I wouldn't want to call it, it's not quite draft. Linear? Yeah, a little more linear. Um, graphic? Yeah, graphic. Also, I, I like the, uh, the kind of the painted frames. You know, when you're working with this kind of uh, thick impasto and stuff, it's nice to kind of uh, keep that constrained slightly within the edge there. Yeah, it creates a, a nice tension and it, it creates some clarity to the uh, uh, really gestural work. And are you using fluorescent colors? Is that what I'm seeing here in some oh, of these? Yeah, there's a bit of fluorescent in the background. Fluorescent uh, red there and the fluorescent yellow. We're going to run in the back very quickly and just catch the last couple of pieces. Okay. All right, Russell, what was the title of the show again? Strange Variants. Strange Variants. And what's the address and name of the gallery? It's Denny Gallery, 261 Broom Street. <laughs> okay. And the opening is? Friday, March 3rd. Okay, we got all that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. And as we always say, thank you, Kate. <laughs> Hey viewers, it's James Conley on the bike. And we are back here on Orchard Street at Alden Projects. And we're going to go in and look at an exhibition by Eleanor Anton. And this particular show is a recreation of her. I guess what you call her breakthrough piece. It's titled 100 Boots. Well, I didn't have any plans on uh, covering anything tonight and I just was pedaling up Orchard Street and I happened to look in here and uh, well, dang, if it wasn't an opening. And uh, darn if Eleanor was not here for the, the opening. Uh, just to give you a brief idea of what the piece is, I think this was done in over a two and a half year period between 1971 and 73. And I think this should also be classified as one of the iconic pieces of conceptual photographic and I might even throw in feminist artworks. This is one of the uh, really great historical pieces of that era. Well, what Eleanor did was somewhere she acquired these hundred rubber boots and then uh, she started posing them and taking photographs and theoretically she started at the Pacific Ocean so that was back on the left and proceeded all the way across America ending in Brooklyn and from those photographs she printed it says here 51 postcards that she's then mailed out to various hot shots and uh, critics, curators, and art dealers. Hey, there's Ronald Feldman, and then there's the artist. This is some of the ephemera. Museum of Modern Art. There's a list of uh, names and addresses of people she was mailing the postcards to. Here are the postcards themselves. Somebody has mailed them back. Kiniston McShine. Most of which are, 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 are unknown to the world. So if everyone thinks of 100 Boots as being only, only like be contained by the four corners of the postcards, but when really she made these photographs that That's were shown at the moment that were, that were part of the piece. Mm -hmm. So okay, these so, were, um, but yeah, these were particular pieces, like that, for example, is like boots on the Mexican, uh, U.S. border there. Uh, I'm, 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 it's Undocumented it's, boots. It's immigration. Uh, it's, 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 yeah, it's immigration. Yeah, so that's why it's obviously like, obviously very, the same thing with the one on the right. It's a little different version of it. These were, it wasn't that, um, it wasn't that she thought these were not um, any less successful than the other ones that were that were actually printed as cards, necessarily, but that um, this postcards is, like a, is a very, it's kind of travelogue, like Huckleberry Finn, it tells a kind of very, very complicated uh, narrative. And she thought that these were either, they were too, they were too strikingly political, or they were too disruptive of the particular narrative that she was telling, which is why she didn't include them in that context. So this, the idea of the show is to sort of expand, the, expand everyone's understanding of what the 100 Boots series is, which was the way that she initially thought of it when she, when she made the series and exhibited it both in 72 and 73. Yeah. Like so, just specifically though, like this one here. This is this is an out. This is a, this is an outtake of the very first one. This is actually the first one that she ever did 
for the 100 boots, if I'm not mistaken. This, this is also the one that she chose. That is, there's a couple of ones that did become part of the uh, well, this, we can make, try to come back and then talk to Eleanor later if she's not bashful. I believe this is the, the entire collection of the 51 photographs that she turned into postcards. We'll start with the... John. Beach in the yeah. Pacific Ocean. Yeah, I really don't think you could look at a lot of the uh, top flight blue chip uh, female photographers and conceptual artists like uh, Cindy Sherman, Barbara Kruger, uh, Sherry Levine, Lori Simmons without uh, kind of acknowledging that Eleanor Atten was, was where this all came from. She was kind of the wellspring of a lot of, of this photographic conceptualism. Well, I think one of the reasons that uh, this piece was considered so radical and has become a, an essential part of that's what you call photographic conceptualism was that it is a series. So there's kind of a an unspoken narrative also has uh, a lot of political content they say here in the newsletter or in the in the press release that uh, oh, I like this one with the, the geese and the ducks in the background that this was also a reference to Vietnam and uh, I guess you could sort of see these boots as uh, missing soldiers somehow returning home, crossing the country. Oh, that's good. In the trees. <laughs> okay, now this must be Vegas. Yeah, it would be interesting to know exactly how many states Eleanor was actually able to uh, photograph the boots in. Oh, that must be on the Staten Island Ferry. The World Trade Center is brand new at that point. This must be <laughs> break time. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, so now we're finally getting to New York. Um, the, you know, knows it's like the Upper West Side. Uh, Columbus Circle. Uh, well, we caught up with uh, Eleanor Anton at 100 Boots. I got a couple of questions. <laughs> this one, too. This one, too. Perfect timing. Yes. Eleanor, these are some big fans. Yeah, one, two. Oh. Right oh. under the yeah. yeah. There's a lot of sun up there. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's really well, uh, I'm not a person who does selfies. So, <laughs> okay. You know, I, I take pictures. He's, he's a, get a pictures. real videographer. I take pictures. And next so is this? What is it? Is it 40 years ago or something like that that yeah, you that did this? Carving a traditional sculpture. <laughs> yes, where you you go on a diet. Are you yes. are you going to do it naked yeah, again too? Perfect for my body. Okay. So I'll be looking forward to that. <laughs> I got a few questions for you. Where did you get the boots? Where did, they, where did oh, those come from? Navy surplus. Very cheap in those days. Yeah. Okay. 200 bucks for the, the whole thing. And uh, I was wondering, you said it took you two and a half years to do the entire series. Yes. How many states did you actually go through and take photographs in? I only went through California and New York City. Okay, so just <laughs> you missed the flyover country. <laughs> um, one of the things, I'm actually working on a series of. Uh, pieces dealing with uh, female photographers who are into conceptual art and 
you're maybe one of the, the great icons there. I'm also interested in the history of uh, San Diego, California. Now, I know your husband was a poet. Yes. And I guess your first breakthrough was uh, Blood of the Poets, another piece that took a couple of years, right? And you collected yes, blood from... Actually done in New York before we went to San Diego. To San Diego. That's a tape now there. Congratulations. Um, so it, as my researches have gone on, I found out that uh, San Diego and uh, the University of California, San Diego was kind of a hotbed of conceptual art, I think. Was John Baldessari there when you got John, to work? Yeah, John is one of the few people who was born in San Diego, nationally. Yes. <laughs> and he was taught with us, and Alan Capro, and me, and David, and Newton, and Helen Harrison. It was an incredible department in which we had all the different media. We had, uh, we, uh, we essentially were conceptual art. And in a lot of ways, that's where a lot of this started. Now, didn't yes. Martha Rossler also come out she there? Was, Did you know Martha? Yeah, a oh, that's great. Okay, well, I'm uh, getting all this done uh, for this project. Anyway, I just wanted to congratulate you and say that I really enjoy what you're doing. It's great to see this again, and uh, I'll be looking forward to the, what was it, the sculptural, <laughs> the living sculpture piece? Because I remember the original version was about 1965, was that? No, no, it was 75? 73. 73. Okay. All right. 73. Well, yeah. And this one will be 40 years later. It's a little bit. Uh, you also, you've also you've been you've spent a lot of time kind of dealing with poets and poetry. Oh yeah. Well, I'm also a writer. So. Oh, I didn't I, know that. I have a new book out which is called The Advent. Um, the, um, uh, um, oh shit. Um, it's by <laughs> Eleonora Antonova, my ballerina persona. Yes. And it's called An Artist's Life. That sounds good. We'll be looking forward to it. Thank you, Eleanor Anton, and congratulations on 100 boots. Thank you. Well, that was great. And uh, so this is James Come coming to you from the Alton Projects and Eleanor Anton's 100 boots, the Lost Picture Show. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you, ladies.